DFM, DFM rocks. Bula Minaka, I'm Linda Form, I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm a character from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love the Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, alleged murder victim, well food program worker. Bribes and money laundering part of drug problem. And work on multi-million dollar Lautoka police station begins. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. The woman killed in an alleged service street murder in Suva yesterday afternoon has been identified. Jennifer Ann Downs was an Australian national who had been working for the UN World Food Programme in the Pacific since 2017. Apenisa Wangai Rindovu with the details. Jennifer Downs was known as Jennifer Lusaka to her colleagues at the United Nations office in Suva. In an email response to FBC News, the UN office says Jenna had worked as a logistics officer for WFP in the Pacific since 2017. She started her career as a logistician more than 10 years ago, first in the Democratic Republic of Congo, then Australia and Vanuatu. The police investigation into the case continues as key suspect. Her husband, Henry Lusaka John, remains hospitalized. It is alleged that he tried to commit suicide by jumping from a balcony. The Australian Department of Foreign Affairs has confirmed they are providing consular assistance to the Downs family. Traditionally, the Australian government provides such assistance, which may include support and guidance to families and liaison with local and Australian authorities to assist with funeral arrangements or repatriation costs. FBC News found forensics officers gathering evidence at the scene this morning. The couple and their three children moved into the neighbourhood a few months ago. Investigation into the alleged murder continues. The post-mortem will be carried out tomorrow. Apenisa Wangarandovu, FBC News. A complex network using bribery and money laundering is involved in the distribution of hard drugs in Fiji. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Veningilio says there are men and women operating in the shadows, but they won't be for very long. Edwin Nunn reports. Police initially picked up traces of small amounts of methamphetamine trades in Fiji four years ago. But those pulling the strings have become bolder. There is a lot of money involved, uh, getting police officers corrupted, getting people at our points of entry corrupted, money laundering from uh, money made out of, uh, of all these drugs. Uh, we've seen patterns of this money going into uh, being laundered and buying properties. Police Commissioner Siti Veningilio also hinted as to where the drugs may be coming from or going to via Fiji. It obviously has linkages overseas. That's why we're working closely with Australia, New Zealand, the US and the Chinese authorities in dealing with this. Gilio stresses that his officers are making inroads. We will continue to chip away at it. We're making arrests on a daily basis and it's, it's not going to stop. It's in our faces right now. We turn on the news, we see some kind of violence that's happened, yes. We see something literally about drugs that's happening, yes. And we can't be a person that lives in a bubble. The authorities keep changing their operations after finding out that criminals are trying to discover their tracking method. In some instances, methamphetamine has been diluted to try and trick dogs in the canine detector unit. Edwin Nunn, FBC News. The Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission submitted its 2016, 2017 and 2018 annual reports to the President and a copy to Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama. The annual reports document the renaissance of a National Human Rights Commission that lost its accredited status a decade ago and the steps it has taken in the last three years towards the protection, promotion and preservation of human rights. This is also in accordance with the Commission's constitutional mandate of education and advocacy as well as conducting independent investigations. The submitting of the reports is in important in not only ensuring that the Commission is able to dispense with its mandate but has also set the Commission on a path towards compliance with the Paris Principles and becoming a fully accredited national human rights institution. 
Residents of Jitu Estate are now echoing similar concerns to those raised about attacks and robberies in Rewanga Suva. They claim young people of school age are not in school and are indulging in criminal activity. Lena Reese reports. G2 Estate resident Pravin Singh claims that vacant homes in the area have become a spot for youths using drugs and contributing to crime in the area. They smoke boys, they smoke marijuana, they smoke ice and everything. They smoke here. Yeah. About uh, 14, 15 years old. We asked uh, how many times, but the owner said we're going to pull it out. He doesn't pull it. Almost uh, three years now. So the uh, people, they go to the work. In the afternoon they come, they go, no, they go with a phone, they come without phone. Another resident who lives less than a meter from an empty house and did not wish to appear on camera says he fears for the safety of his three daughters. Meanwhile, police are also investigating clips of crimes from closed circuit cameras being put out on social media. So sometimes the stations are overwhelmed, but we've advertised command center numbers and DPC's numbers that they can call if they've called the station and they said they are out committed, all the vehicles are committed. Uh, that's the reality on the ground, but we are looking at, we are forming teams uh, uh, that uh, can react quickly to that, mobile teams that we are, doing. We are constantly uh, reposturing ourselves to counter that. A number of residents in various areas are forming community watch groups to assist the police and create a sense of security in their neighborhood. Lena Reese, FBC News. The new multi-million dollar Lautoka police station is expected to effectively meet the demands of the growing Lautoka community. As the second city in the nation, Lautoka will have a police station elevated to metropolitan status due to the city's expansion. Philip and Icasa was at the groundbreaking ceremony. The investment of over $28 million in the new Lautoka police station is to ensure that officers are better equipped to counter crime. As Lotoka is a densely populated area, policing strategies need to be innovative to counter the prevalent offenses of aggravated robbery, theft, damaging property, common assault, and serious assault. The completion of the Lotoka police station will also mean residents can expect a lot more from the police. So that's a challenge uh, for the officers now. Uh, the, the expectations will only uh, grow bigger. Uh, if we are at a certain level or tempo of operations now, we have to lift that manifold when this comes out. The expectations of the public will be higher than what it is now. And we have to deliver. Last year, Lotoka recorded 28% of the crime in the Western Division and 10% of the overall crime in Fiji. Lotoka being Fiji's second city and a major manufacturing and business hub, is developing rapidly and we need to work together to combat emerging crime threats. The old Lutoko police station's building will be demolished in the next few days and the new project is expected to be completed after a year. Philip and I, Caso, FBC News. Funeral homes are seeing a high demand for coffins, indicating an increase in the number of deaths. The director of one of the funeral homes says they sell up to 500 coffins annually. Kelly Bavala reports it's alarming to see the number of coffins purchased weekly for both adults and children. The Dominion funeral director, like many others, is making more coffins each year to meet the need. The numbers has increased, so uh, there could be a lot of reasons. Uh, and cities, as we know, there's a rise in cities, so that could be one of the factors. Climate change. Uh, we have seen that in the hotter months, there's a lot of deaths, mm -hmm. because that leads to a lot of heart, heart attacks and diseases like that. Director Joshua Chand says coffin prices vary and can go up to two thousand dollars. For a week, there has to be somewhere around eight to ten funerals per funeral director. That is personally speaking. So, and there's about. Close to roughly 10 funeral directors in the Suba area. So I guess you can do the calculations. There's about 80 to 90 funerals per week. The Fiji Correction Service, which is responsible for burial plots, also says the need is increasing. Request for burial plots is uh, on the increase. Uh, we have a lot of uh, congestion issues with uh, space at uh, our Suba and uh, Lobinilas and New Extension Cemeteries. Uh, hence, uh, the civil works that we're currently undertaking here at Nasin. With the current uh, civil works that we're undertaking in Suba, hopefully that will provide us too with uh, at least another, another 15,000 plots. Eh? 
Under the Burial Act, plots can be reopened after 14 years. The FCS is exercising this practice to meet the current demand and await the completion works of the Suva Nasimu cemeteries. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Up ahead, advanced flash flood guidance system to enhance safety. And alleged money launderers plead not guilty. Details after the break. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiana here in Bar. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. A new flash flood guidance system, the first of its kind in the Pacific, will be implemented in Fiji soon. The system will supplement and improve existing systems used for monitoring and providing early warning for flash floods by the Fiji Met Office. Koroi Tandalala reports. The new proposed system will change how forecasts are made in Fiji. What is entailed in this is the ability for us to better prepare forecasts when it comes to uh, flood. And these floods are flash floods in particular to uh, catchment areas. You know that Fiji is a place that has uh, catchment areas are not too big and not too broad. And sometimes when it comes to flash floods, it can happen very quickly. Director Meteorology Misaeli Funaki says Fiji is taking a leading role in the Pacific in addressing areas of concern regarding weather and flash flooding forecasts. But it is the first uh, initiative to be independently installed for a country in the Pacific. But for the South Pacific or the Pacific region, this is the first and is the only one that is looking after the flash flood guidance system for Fiji. Hydrologic Research Center engineer Dr. Modric Hansen says flash flood is a global concern and the new system can help minimize the casualties associated with it. Uh, flash floods are a great concern worldwide because they occur very quickly. Uh, in Fiji, I understand an hour or less. Uh, and the, the goal is to make earlier predictions so that people can get out of the way and to save lives of, of, of the Fijian people. The Fiji Met Director says the new system will greatly benefit his department and will allow them to make precise warning. Kurei Tandulala, FBC News. Two Cyprus nationals facing money laundering charges have pleaded not guilty. Loises and Cleanthes Petridis were charged after allegedly withdrawing cash from several ATMs around Suva two years ago. Catherine Krishna reports. The two are charged with two counts of money laundering, one count each of attempt to obtain property by deception and possession of property suspected of being proceeds of crime. For the first count of money laundering, it is alleged the brothers between December 12th and 19th in 2017 engaged directly in transactions involving $26,890 in Suva. For the second count, it is alleged that on the same dates, the two brothers withdrew $8,000 from BSP ATM and sent the proceeds of the alleged crime overseas. In both cases, the cash was withdrawn using fraudulent credit cards and stolen personal financial information. It is also alleged that on the same date, the two allegedly attempted to dishonestly obtain $103,770 from Bank of the South Pacific. The two Cyprus nationals were also found in possession of property worth $203,011, which is believed to be proceeds of crime. The defense has stated that they will be challenging the credibility of BSP Bank's database. The case will be recalled next Monday. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. The state will be calling in 19 witnesses when the trial of 24-year-old Canadian national Joshua Aziz Rahman charged with drug-related offences starts. The court also heard that there is a possibility of the state calling in two experts from overseas. The state will also be relying on caution interview. In response, the defence will most likely call a senior counsel from overseas or Fiji to represent Rahman. Rahman has been charged with one count of unlawful possession of illicit drugs. It is alleged that on February 14, 39 bars of white substance was recovered from his home in Thambati, Nasinu, during a raid which weighed 39.5 kilograms. 
The bars later tested positive for cocaine with an estimated street value of $31 million. The case will be recalled on September 10th. Having a home for 59-year-old Premwati of Omka Road, Narere is something she never thought possible. After receiving her new home from the Lands Minister today, an emotional Wati thanked the government and the community for their support. Sanyan Mboila reports. In 2017, Wati received a 99-year lease but was unable to build a proper home because she was unemployed and dependent on the community. A child. I am very happy and just overwhelmed with happiness. What is now being assisted by the Ministry of Social Welfare and she receives $50 monthly for food and other basic necessities. Lands Minister Ashnil Sudaka says the government receives a 99-year lease under the government's quarter regularization policy. With all the difficulties, she did not go and uh, plead with anybody. She remained calm. She waited for the government to, to regularize this and the community to help. And uh, now she's got her own place to live. Wati's house was constructed by the Senat and the Ramrewa branch with the assistance from members of the public. The wood and corrugated iron home was built in just two days with the help of neighbors. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. A small island in Kandavu is making the most of the return from the Survivor series that was shot on their island. They have purchased seven new fiberglass boats that will ease their travel woes to the main island. Kritika Kumar reports the new boats will be used by around 33 households. Silver Waters Fiberglass Fiji spent three and a half weeks to build these boats. Our location probably is one of the challenge, uh, especially when uh, we are operating our facilities uh, down in uh, Ovea Mbao Telewu, that's uh, near Mbao Landing. Awanawai Sao Village Chair Puasangiri says some spots on the island will still be used for the new season of the famous Survivor TV series and these boats will come in handy. We have an agreement with um, TLTB and uh, PLP regarding the filming of um, that's, that is happening in Kandavu that they will uh, hire these boats. Giri says this will also create employment for more than 14 villages. The boat will uh, hire a boat master or a boat captain and a crew. And that will um, help uh, them getting salary every week. The total cost of all the boats are around $153,000. Season 5 of the Survivor Series was shot on the island and the Matangali is pleased that the returns have been put to good use. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. And Karoy joins us now with business. Thank you, Jackie. Coming up, ANZ renews tourism award sponsorship. And in growing PG, Village 6 cinemas to receive facelift. Stay with us. My name is Neha, and I'm from Karavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. Hamachale, Nasori se, Mirchi FM, Bod Julum. Hi, I'm Shara Pukash Bhatkata. I'm Tava, I'm Mirchi FM Stepkinson, and Mirchi FM, it's hot. Hi, my name is Prashant. I live in Suba. I love Mirchi FM because Mirchi FM, it's hot. Hi, I'm Shane. I love uh, listening to Mirchi FM because it's awesome and it's hot. Hi, I'm Rachel. And I'm Shavi. We, we love, love listening to Mirchi FM in Lambasa. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Leading business tonight, ANZ Fiji has announced its renewed naming rights sponsorship for the annual Fiji Excellence in Tourism Awards for a further two years. Country head Saad Minam says they will continue to support the event as tourism has been the key driver for our economic growth. Minam says the recent economic outlook report states visitor arrivals will stay at record levels and this will have a multiplier effect on hotels and infrastructure. Awards Chair Bill Whitting says this is one of the biggest awards night in the country. They've been a fabulous partner with the Fiji Excellence and Tourism Awards, so um, it's, it's delightful. I'm happy to share it with everyone that yes, we as a bank have uh, continued to commit ourselves in the improvement and betterment of uh, uh, tourism sector. We now join Gary from HFC Bank with the latest from the stock markets. The New Zealand dollar has dropped its most in two weeks after the central bank said it was a refreshing strategy for unconventional monetary policy. The Reserve Bank of New Zealand cut its benchmark rate to 1.5% in May and economists predict another reduction next month. 
The RBNZ's move to take another look at its strategy for unconventional policy is a signal that rates will likely stay low for longer. The euro slipped to a two-month low today as markets waited to gauge the European Central Bank's stance on policy amid bubbling expectations that it could eventually lower interest rates and join the global easing trend. The euro was also seen as way down as the pound slumped towards a two-year low after Boris Johnson yesterday won the contest to be the next British Prime Minister and raised the specter of a no-deal Brexit. Inaka. Here are today's exchange rates. As said this morning, the Fiji dollar was on the rise against the Chinese yuan, the U.S. greenback, the PNG Kina and the yen. The Sangamoli fell slightly against the Aussie and Kiwi dollars and the euro. Commodity prices were on the rise. Crude oil was up at just under $57 a barrel. Gold rose to $1,422 per ounce and silver closed up at 16.48 per ounce. In growing Fiji, one of the iconic buildings in Suva, the Village 6 Cinemas, is undergoing major redevelopment. The cinema was constructed 23 years ago, and the modern group of companies believes a facelift is necessary. Pranita Prakash reports. While not revealing the investment amount, Damodar Group Chief Executive Div Damodar says food, shopping and entertainment will now be available under one roof. Uh, we're in the process of uh, making that into a, a shopping mall. Um, there will be cinemas there. Um, the food court is completed. Uh, there's a retail element that's coming in and there's an actual mall for tourism element that's coming in which will be supporting specifically also the SMEs which is our primary role of the mall group now to assist SMEs and youth of Fiji. As part of redevelopment, the group will also reduce its cinemas. Uh, the cinemas will be reduced to four, as two cinemas are being uh, used for retail element in the process. And uh, there will be a brand launching of that, uh, for, for that complex itself. Moviegoers have welcomed the idea. Very, very great idea. Uh, the first of the class to mind is convenience. Especially with me, I've, I'm bringing, uh, I've got three kids with me, and I cannot, I'll, I'll find it so inconvenient to be crossing the road, looking for a shop to buy uh, food. The redevelopment is expected to be completed between February and August next year, creating more jobs. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. That's it from Business Tonight. Sports is up next with Jamie. Thanks, Gray, and good evening up ahead in sports. FBC score exclusive partnership for Dean's coverage. And fair chance given to all players, says McKee. There's some more coming up. Hello here, Tawa. We love today FM. Today FM rocks. Bulaminaka, I'm Linda Form. I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm Makereta from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love for Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. The Fiji Broadcasting Corporation has become the exclusive radio and television partner for the Vodafone Dean's Trophy Competition. Tagged as the biggest secondary schools rugby competition in the region, the historic deal announced today sees FBC team up with the Fiji Secondary Schools Rugby Union and the Fiji Rugby Union to bring all Fijians the best action from the Deans. FBC will start its coverage this weekend with the under-18 quarterfinals live on Radio Fiji 1 and on the FBC Sports Channel that's available on the YLAC platform. Faria Begum with this report. FBC Chief Executive Riyas Sethium says the new partnership continues in the motto of the company to help develop sports at the grassroots level. Extremely excited about the fact that we are for the first time in a position to be able to promote rugby to its fullest because we believe that if we are able to promote rugby and uh, get more interest in rugby from a grassroots level, then we can only get better at our national level. And uh, that's been proven uh, elsewhere all throughout the world, and we've got to start them early, and this is the way to do it. Broadcast is here to stay, and uh, broadcast is what's going to generate more interest uh, in the game of rugby.
Ted Hume says through FBC's AM Reach, the whole of Fiji will be able to enjoy radio commentaries of the four under-18 quarterfinals. FBC Sports Channel team leader Jamie Toro says his team will be using the top-of-the-range gear and personnel to beam the games to all the fans. And for the first time in Fiji, all under-18 games will be broadcasted on TV and radio, but with an added feature. Give um, the deans the respect it deserves and to uh, improve our coverage for all Fijians. We've also uh, at, at an, at an exp expense um, allowed for two commentary teams, so we can give uh, our viewers and listeners a... Uh, better coverage. FBC manager News and Sports Indra Singh says with all other grades being played on outer grounds, fans will not miss out on the updates and action. What we've done is we have put together teams that will be based at different grounds to give live updates in terms of results, pictures and videos for everyone to follow and that will be on our online team. That, that is going to happen the whole of Saturday right up until the finals. Fiji Rugby Union Chief Executive John O'Connor says that having partnered with FBC during its provincial competition, they are delighted to be working with Fiji's biggest broadcaster once again. I think in the second year of our partnership, we are starting to realize the benefits of having live broadcast uh, on FBC. Uh, you will note from our recent uh, matches, uh, especially at uh, Febrava and Gonua, the broadcast has generated interest, uh, generated people. Uh, wanting to come down to the stadium. All games are at the ANZ Stadium in Suva. Faria Begum, FBC Sports. The Fiji Secondary Schools Rugby Union is happy with its new sponsorship deal for the 2019 Dean's Trophy competition. Naming rights sponsor Vodafone showing its support not just for the national finals, but also for teams competing in the various zones. Faria Begum again with the details. Funding and logistics have been taken care of following the announcement of Vodafone as the major sponsor for this year's Dean's competition. The um, funds have trickled down right down to the zone level, right to schools with this uh, new partnership. And I believe it will take this competition to another level. To the Cow says this year's tournament is enjoyable because there are new teams in the competition and some new contenders in the quarterfinals. There are also a few new teams coming into the Dean's competition this year for the first time, uh, like Latian Ra in the under-19 uh, division. We have two teams from St. Beach, the under-15 and under-19. These are some of the teams that have came up for the first time in the Dean's uh, quarterfinal. Andrew Vakarau says Vodafone has ensured the best arrangements are made for the tournament. We knew that it was not going to be easy, but um, we tried our best to work out a, a funding model that will benefit uh, the sport. Um, we all know that um, if we are to perform well on the international stage, the grassroots is very important. The Dean's quarterfinals take place this weekend at the ANZ Stadium. Faria Begum, FBC Sports. Flying Fijians coach John McKee says his team that played the first test against the Maori All Blacks packed a lot more experience than the one that played the return match. However, he is impressed with players who took the challenge on to stake their claim for a World Cup spot. Certainly, certainly in game two, you know, probably lesser experienced um, side and, and some younger players. But certainly, you know, a couple of those guys really, really stood up and, 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 and showed us what they've got go, going forward. The Flying Fijians take on Japan in their first match of the Pacific Nations Cup at 5.50 p.m. this Saturday. Wallaby centre Samu Karevi admits he doesn't know when or if he will return to Suncorp Stadium after signing a deal to play in Japan at the end of the year. Lautoka Football Association President Rakesh Prasad says retaining players who didn't leave through the transfer window has boosted the side for the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants. He adds national reps Samuel Nrunru, Zebra Sahib and Benyamino Matai Nangara are back from the Pacific Games and ready to hit the field. Faria Begum has more. Rakesh Kumar says Lotoka will do all they can to ensure the boys deliver up to standard. He has also revealed that Dave Randringai is back in the team. Uh, we got some youth boys and the old boys will come here. The GL our team very good and the Dave Randringai is already back here to win our team. So already we do his uh, application. So all key players here will give a good go in BOG. Lotoka forward Sekovifi now says the team is in a better position now that his teammates have returned. We still have a lot of improvements to work on, so we still have two days to work on our improvements. 
and hopefully by come Friday we'll be at our best. Lautoka takes on Nasino in their first BLG match at 1.30 p.m. this Friday. And you can catch the live commentary of this match on Radio Fiji too. Faria Begum, FBC Sports. In today's play of the day, Australian Rhiannon Ifland putting on a late show at the Diving World Championships in South Korea, snatching gold with her last effort in the 20-meter high dive. Ifland took out the event by the smallest margin in the competition's history, just 0.15 points as she edged Mexico. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather and the new media. Amazon enters real estate industry. Details after the break. My name is Neha and I'm from Karavi. And Mirchi FM is hot. Hamachale Nasori se Mirchi FM bahut julum. Hi, I'm Shara Pukash Bhatkata, Uttava, I'm Mirchi FM Stapkinson and Mirchi FM is hot. Hi, my name is Prashant, I live in Suva, I love Mirchi FM because Mirchi FM is hot. Hi, I'm Shane, I love uh, listening to Mirchi FM because it's awesome and it's hot. Hi, I'm Rachel. And I'm Shavi. We, we love, love listening to Mirchi FM in Lambasa. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Amazon has officially entered the real estate game and we're not talking about the tiny houses you can buy on Amazon.com. And it's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. There were sunny spells all over the country today. It's a Wednesday, we're getting closer to some fun events that's coming up this weekend. Or should I say Super Deans will be on. Exciting. Let's quickly check out the centers. Now in the west, fine spells throughout. What a day. Eastwards from Pak Haba to Suva, after sunshine, cloudy spells were active. Light showers likely for tonight. And up north, gorgeous spells prevailed. At sea, southeast winds gusting to 20 knots. For the tides, high tide at 12 12 a.m. with low tide at 6 26 a.m. Sunrise at 6.35. For tomorrow, a sunny weather picture is indicated which will be interrupted by noon showers. This is mainly for the eastern areas. Tomorrow's stems, cooler temperatures can be experienced in most centers. And looking further on to Friday, light showers are sighted for now. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, do you think Ratukandavu Level School can win the Dean's title third year in a row? Surely they'll maintain uh, to win this, uh, this year because they have, uh, they have maintained uh, that uh, win from the previous year. So it's, it's a must. It's a must for them. The RKS team have been in the winning system for years now. So as an old boy, I am 100% sure that we will win again this year. And I think that RKS will dominate again the title this year for the Dates final. Uh, yes, RKS can defend their title because the, of the uh, programs that they've been putting through for this couple of years. All the development that they've done is starting to pay off now. Yes, they are. They have put in a structure that will see them defend the Dean's title. Yes, they can win this year. Recapping the main stories for tonight, alleged murder victim, well food program worker, bribes and money laundering part of drug problem and work on multi-million dollar Lautoka police station begins. For these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question, we're asking, should further prison terms be implemented for inmates found with contrabands? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, the Waindina River in Bunindawa, sent in by Avinesh Chand. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. Follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news, hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I stay safe. Nadango Mereya, Maramani Waya Manatuya Sawa, 
Radio Fiji 